What's up guys, this is Emaniac Gamer. So in this video I'm going to show you how to get 60 frames continuously in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now you want to make sure you have at least the minimum requirement which is an i5-6600 or AMD FX3550 and these graphics cards. They're right under system requirements when you click on the game. You see you go to the top from here, it'll come up right here. It's for PC obviously and they want to make sure that you have Windows and DirectX 11. Make sure you're not running DirectX 12. DirectX 12 will screw up the game. So DirectX 11. All right. Just if you want to get an idea of where that card benchmarks, the minimum the i5 that benchmarks at 8,000. About my card, which is actually the recommended card, the AFX 8350, that benchmarks at almost 9,000. So that's what you're looking at, really, a card that benchmarks at that much. If you want me to go into computer benchmarks in a different video, I'd be happy to do that. Just leave it in the comments. So if this number doesn't mean anything to you, um, leave a question, and I'd be happy to answer that. Now, in-game, there's a couple of settings. So let me just go into that real quick. Alright, so in the corner of my computer, you actually see here, the top number is the frames per second, that's about 114. That's about where it jumps around in-game, actually. But what you want to do is you want to go to video if you want to make sure that you get 60 frames. And you think that it's important, you want to make sure you can turn on V-Sync. Automatically drop down to 60 frames. Now, some people like that, they say that it's great to match that with the refresh rate of the monitor. Um, if you have a powerful enough card, yes, it's good. But if you have a low-end card that doesn't reach 60 frames, is jumping around 50 and 40, and you turn on the V-Sync, it will really struggle with keeping up and getting 60 frames. So you want to make sure your card is well above 60. Like my card, if I turn off V-Sync right here, vertical sync, see it gets like 100, 112 frames per second. So that's twice as much. Once you enable V-Sync, it'll drop down. So see, you want to be getting at least 80 to 90 frames per second here before enabling V-Sync. If your computer cannot get that, do not enable V-Sync because that will just make put a lot of strain on your card and ruin your gameplay experience. So thank you for watching. I hope you found that helpful. And please comment, like, and subscribe for more videos from Zemaniac Gamers and Gaming Tutorials.